So we're going to talk a little bit now about choosing the right insulation when you do these buildings. Um, there's a couple choices. You know, the most widely known is, is a spray foam. We see it on all the TV programs. We see it in our friends' barns and in applications. Excellent product, uh, but it's got its right applications and of applications where maybe it doesn't work quite so well. So we have also have a newer product. It's called Satac. And I say newer, it's been out for years. Uh, it was used, originally used in the Southwest, known as a K13. Uh, our product comes from uh, Joplin, Missouri. Uh, and it's a spray applied thermal acoustic cellulose. That's the acronym that we come up with the name SATAC. It's a spray applied thermal acoustic cellulose. So, in the name, it tells you that obviously it's an insulator, but from a noise, noise standpoint, hard to beat. When we use uh, spray foams, there's an open cell and a closed cell, and there's a lot of confusion about which is which, which is better. Um, the spray foam has excellent adhesion qualities. So if you have uh, an older building, it might be a little easier to do the spray foam because it's self-supporting and it's going to stick to the surfaces a little better. When we do these buildings, there are constraints. Uh, I was talking to a couple fellows earlier at our booth. We turn away 15 to 20 jobs a year at the end of the year because it's too cold to spray. Right now, we're not spraying it because in the metal buildings, the expansion and contraction of the buildings, in the morning, the sun's out, your skin might be 30 degrees, by noon, it might be 85 degrees. So that's grossly stretching that metal and will pop a spray foam off. So you need a more constant temperature when you do these. So we'll talk about the SATAC first. Um, you know, everybody kind of knows about the cellulose. It's been around for years. It's an 85% recycled compound. Um, the original thought was, wow, it's paper, it's got to burn, right? It doesn't. It's one of the safest insulations in the world for flame. The SATAC is approved to be sprayed in a building like this with direct exposure, no, no protection. That's how good it is. Um, the uh, resistance to mice and birds comes from part of its fire retardants. The, uh, the product is treated with boric salts. There's a mine salt, we find boric acid and contact solution. So it's very safe for the individual uh, and animals. So when we do this in livestock barns, horse barns, that's one of the things we look at. We want to make sure we're putting something safe in there. Since it has to be higher boric treating, it's bitter. It has no chemical to kill pests, but the pests don't like it. They want to get back out because they don't want to chew on it, they don't want to put it in their mouth, they don't want it on their legs. When you treat for termites, you sprinkle boric acid around your house. The bugs don't like it. So you see, it's, it's inner ingredients really make it what we want a lot in the applications that we look at in a whole bar. 77% noise reduction. If you're ever banging on metal in a barn, straighten something out. It makes a difference. It's a trust. The performance characteristics of this, it's R3.8 per inch. So a little less than what you're going to see with foams, a little better than an open cell foam that we're going to talk about in a minute. It is class one fire rated. Uh, smoke develop rating of 15. That means once it starts to burn, it actually puts off very little smoke. The flame spread is five. That's about as low as you can get. I mean, this is, this is, these test conditions are putting them in a pretty stringent uh, and tough environment. Uh, when we install it, we normally will do about an R8 on the wall. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, you can hold a blowtorch on this and it will not burn, it will not spread. So it's very, very safe. Um, we talked about the salts and it's bitter to pest. First thing we do when we come in to do a building is we got to look at the surface. We got to have something that's going to allow this to stick. Most buildings, whether they're made 20 years ago or just last year, are either treated with oils or silicones to help keep the metal from, from rusting. Well, that's like trying to spray on a Teflon skillet. So we got to do something to etch into that to be able to get it to bite on the wall. So we use a latex primer and sealer that goes on the walls before we spray. Uh, we do about a two inches per coat. Now we can go up to eight inches thick on the walls and you can do up to six inches thick on a ceiling. So it's self-supporting, it needs no other support at all. And the adhesives are um, 
probably about as toxic as Elmer's glue. So it's very, very safe. There's no outgassing with the product. Here you can see one of my guys were doing a, a this was a pole barn down by Marion. You can see the difference in the top that hasn't been treated and kind of what we do with the airless sprayer in, in between. That dries in about 45 minutes, so once we get to the job site, we clean up any major dirt with an air compressor, get the walls blown clean, start the primer, and then we'll get ready to spray. And this, and this was a metal frame building, so we want to make sure we get all of the, the girts in that building insulated because anything is solid metal touching from the outside to the inside, you want all the surfaces of that covered. Otherwise, you're going to have a big heat loss through those impossible condensation. Um, clean up is very quick with the product. Um, with the foams, we have to, anything you don't want foam on, you better cover. Because once it's on it, it's not going anywhere. With this product, we have about an hour period where we can spray, clean up, get everything like we want it to be, making a nice looking job for you. And since it's a little easier to clean up, that reflects in a lower overall installation cost. There's less prep time, less cleanup time, so that makes less money for you. Um, typically, we're 30%, 25% less than a closed cell spray foam with the SATAC. So it's a good alternative because buildings are big. It's a lot of square feet. So the savings add up very, very quickly. When you try to match what you're going to use your building for to the insulation, kind of a quick example is with the SATAC, it may be perfect. If you have a welding shop and you're grinding and you're welding and using torches all day and you've got sparks and embers, what a perfect fit. You're not going to lose your shop to fire if you do that. But if you own a trucking company or you want to put it in a wash bed and it's going to be wet all day long, SATAC is not for you. The adhesives are latex. They will eventually wear down. Uh, you can use SATAC in, in basements and crawl spaces, but I can't do it if, they're, if they've been wet and they, they have a potential for being wet. That's where the closed cell shines. You can spray water on it all day long, every day, and it's going to be just as good as the day we put it up. So we do try to look at what your goals are. We've done uh, animal farms, high dollar horse farms, where they have horses in there that can't get out of their stalls if there's a fire, and horses do tend to chew. So they want something that's non-toxic in there. Again, perfect fit for safety. The question was, do we have we done done both in the same building? And we have. Uh, especially on a horse farm or something where you have a wash bay for the horses. We'll do that in the, in the foam and then we'll do the SATAC. And we can do the ceiling sometimes, but we prefer to say with the SATAC. Um, we were just talking about this. Plan your project in advance. Um, we were laughing this morning with the gentleman over here in the corner and I were talking. And every year we turn these people away because I grew up on a farm and I know how it is. You want to have the money in the bank before you spend it. And well, we got to get planned because once that ter the temperature turns, and I don't know what day that is, this year was November. We pretty much had to turn off the spigot. We couldn't do it anymore. A lot of years, you could have sprayed clear up into January. But make sure you get your project planned far enough in advance that we can get out there and take care of you. And that isn't just for me. It's all of our, all of our spray contractors running the same problem.